Hi, Damien here from Power Diary. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to add users. So we just go to set up uh, users and users are different to uh, calendars. So calendars are uh, clinicians, so it um, controls the uh, schedule and the availability and, and so forth. Users are people who can access your Power Diary account. So obviously for each clinician, you would set up um, a user for them um, in this uh, interface here. But you might also add additional users. So there might be uh, admin um, team members and so forth that uh, may not see clients or patients. Um, so they don't need a calendar, but they uh, do need access to the system. We would always suggest that you um, add a unique user for each um, person who's accessing the system. There are no um, charges for having extra users. It's uh, the uh, billing for Power Diary is based on the number of clinicians or number of calendars that are active. So it doesn't add to the cost, but obviously from a security point of view and from an audit point of view, it um, is definitely uh, better to have uh, each person use their own unique uh, user. And I'll show you how to set that up. So. From the start, uh, when you set up your trial, there will uh, have been created uh, what we call a master user. Uh, in this case, uh, and this is obviously just a demonstration uh, account, but we've got this uh, James Taff. So I'm just going to click on uh, James. And what we'll see here is um, James as the master um, user account um, has access to all features. So we don't see any kind of um, the capacity to control what this uh, particular um, user account does because this is uh, usually the person who owns the practice and therefore um, has master control uh, over everything. Uh, this user um, should really be the person who does own the practice or that is um, the person in charge and shouldn't be something that is shared um, to, to others because this is uh, ultimately a super user that can do uh, anything in your account. So uh, don't give out um, those details. As I said, um, create separate ones. So I'm just going to cancel out of that and show you how you add new users. Um, so all you do is click on this add new user button here, add in um, the person's name, uh, their default calendar. So if they are a clinician, um, then set up um, and they have a, a calendar, just uh, indicate which calendar um, is theirs. Um, enter their name here. So we might say, uh, so Megan, um, tell us. Uh, and then here would put in uh, Megan's um, email address. Um, and we'll just have this made up uh, one here. And this um, is important because an invitation uh, email will be sent to this address to allow Megan to then complete the registration process and set up her own uh, password for uh, future um, access. Then uh, we see this uh, area here called available features and this is where you um, can indicate what you would like uh, Megan to have access to and control exactly what uh, Megan can see and what um, she can do. Now I won't run through each of these um, in the video because it uh, would uh, take a long time to explain each one. But if you look in our um, help um, area uh, and look at users, you can get a, a definition and see what each um, each one does. But very quickly, it allows you to control things, for instance, about who can set up um, and configure um, Power Diary. It, um, can control what elements, you know, can they view all calendars um, in the system or perhaps if you don't want that, you turn it off and it means that they can only see their own um, their own calendar. You can access thing, uh, control, I should say, their access to things like session notes or invoices and payments, um, control access to reports, um, control access to um, editing and making certain changes or viewing client correspondence and so forth. So this is really where you get to kind of define what each user is allowed to do in your account so that you stay in control of it, but also um, are able to feel comfortable that uh, these users are only able to do things that you are specifically giving them um, permission to do. So once you have configured um, that, then all you need to do is click the send invitation 
email uh, that will send that um, link off to Megan and she will then be able to complete that and Megan will then be able to access um, the system. If you need to uh, remove a user and make them inactive, all you need to do is go to this list of uh, users and click under this active here and just toggle that across to make them inactive and it will immediately deactivate um, that user so they will no longer be able to um, access the system. Finally, I want to show you um, how the additional authentication works. So once a user is set up and say in this case Megan has accepted the invitation and has created a username and uh, created a password I should say, um, you also have the capacity to require two-factor authentication. So it will be given as an option to Megan um, when she creates um, the um, or completes the, the user setup process. But um, as the uh, administrator, you can also require it. So if you want to do that, you can actually just flick that on um, and save. And that means that next time um, that Megan logs in, she'll actually be required to set up two-factor um, authentication and um, and ensure that you have that additional uh, level of security if that is something um, that you desire. Okay, that's um, it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.